past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the You know what, guys? I'm in a particular mood. So. I went back to look at part one and part two of the series that I have made for this particular what if. Now. I do not like the audio quality, and I do not like the way I was setting things up there. So. Right now, you guys can consider this to be a redo. Anyways, now. Our story will start with Izuku, Midoriya, and Tokoyami. Now, obviously, Tokoyami is going to be human for this timeline to work. And we do actually have these two and their quirks. Now, Midoriya and his brother. They, be, they, they will both receive, receive opposite quirks of each other. Now, Tokoyami will have Dark Shadow. And this can be used as an offensive and defensive capability quirk. And we will have his brother, Midoriya, or Izuku, our main character. Who? He will be receiving a quirk similar to his brother's. Now, a bit of backstory for this. Izuku Midoriya's father, or Midoriya and Tokoyami's father, is going to be a pro hero. Now, he is slowly approaching the top 10. And he's actually, let's give a ranking number, yeah, 13. Now, he is a very, very popular pro hero. And you do have Midoriya's mother, Inko Midoriya, who she was a very, very simple person. She was a light quirk user. And Mid Midoriya's father, he was a dark shadow quirk user. Now, these two would have met one day, let's say whenever Midoriya's father was still early on in his pro hero career, and would have begun dating, or begun dating. And the two, they would have gotten closer with their own interests and with a strange way their quirks do sort of complement one another. As they would have gotten married, and Midoriya and his brother would be born. In Konasashi, surprised, a bit about the other child. Now, they were not expecting twins. And this kind of does throw them for a loop. As Hasashi would take time off of work to help with these two. Since things are about to get a whole lot busier in the household. Now, dealing with these two kids was quite the hassle at first. However, they quickly begun to get things together with how to handle everything. Especially because these two, yeah. They would often go out and play with Bakugo, Kotsky, Mitsuki's son. And oftentimes whenever Inko would be busy and Hisashi would be at work, they were left with Aunt Mitsuki. And she was brutal. Now, it wasn't until the day that Midoriya and, and his brother would awaken their quirks. Now, these two would have a similarly close awakening to one another. Tokoyami one day manifested Dark Shadow and it scared him. Because he thought he was possessed by a demon. Now, you do also then have Midoriya, who the day he awakens light shadow, 
as I'll call him. Now, Midoriya, he was still waiting on his quirk to manifest. And he was just thinking to himself about everything. As he would go to draw in his notebook. And he is wondering about it all. Him drawing a crude picture of his brother in Dark Shadow. As he actually does go to drop a pen. Or drop his drawing utensil. Or his pencil. Whatever. Now. Midoriya, he would actually go to bend down and go to reach for it. As suddenly does jump out of his arm. And grab the pencil before just throwing it back into his hand. And Midoriya would be confused. As he does go to lean over a bit more to see if he was touching the ground. Him being the curious kid he was, yeah. His confusion and surprise, whenever the ground wasn't right there, he went to go fall out of his chair. However, his quirk did manifest, and a third arm, you can call it, did jump out of Midoriya's wrist. And everyone was surprised when Midoriya, he's just sitting there in basically freeze frame like that as he's then able to be pushed up by this weird thing coming out of his body. Now, Midoriya, he would go to look down at his hand, and he does look confused for a second, before he does somewhat go to scream, and the teachers would be confused by what's happening. Midoriya screaming that he got his quirk, he got his quirk, as the teachers would call Inko, and she would come to get her son. Now, she would take Tokoyomi out of school since she is also here. And the teachers, they do sort of understand. As Midori is taken to the quirk doctor, and they do perform tests on this boy. Now, Midoriya, he would learn that his quirk is somewhat mimicking his mother's while at the same time, piggybacking off of his brothers. Now, this does surprise Midoriya, as the doctors, after they did test his quirk, would ask him a few things. And they would actually pull Inko aside and ask her about her quirk, since they believe that some of the things Midoriya can do, she can do as well. Now, Inko would basically talk about how, oh, her quirk's not really that special, because she doesn't really train it very much. However, she does at least train it to be good enough for self-defense. Since she can point at something and shoot through a brick with one little finger. Now, the doctors would ask how many shots Inko can take. And she would talk about how she can at least do three shots. However, if she does want to, she can save up for a big blast with her finger. Now, they would actually ask Inko if she's ever actually had to use this. And she would talk about how early on in college, she kind of did use that for safety reasons. They do understand, correct? To which they do somewhat nod. Now, Inko would also reveal that because of her always being out in the sun and enjoying the way her cork feels, she does also have at least a higher blood cell count meaning a little bit of a healing factor. Meaning that her body does have at least more white blood cells than the average person because of vitamin D. Now, this is quite interesting. And they do take that into consideration. As Inko does at least tell them that that's really all she can think of for right now. As you do then have Midoriya who he is excited about having his own quirk. As he does actually think about it for one minute. But what would my quirk really be like? Well, I think it would be like your brother's. Now, but he would look around, and just think for a second, where was that voice coming from? <sighs> it's coming from your quirk, you dunce. There it is again. Who's there? Are you alright, young man? Hey, idiot. 
Your brother has a sentient quirk. Maybe you might have one as well. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, that makes more sense. Young man, are you okay? Oh, uh, I'm fine. It's just my quirks talking to me? Ah, I see. Can you manifest it outside your body like your brother? No. Lysho actually would go to pop out of the side of Midoriya's cheek and say a few words. As the, this does give proof that Midoriya, he does have a sentient quirk. And Lysho then does disappear back into Midoriya's skin. As Midoriya, he actually would go to bring his hand up and ask exactly where it went. I retreated back inside. I don't like it out here. Come on. It can't be that bad. Besides, you're a quirk. Okay, and? I still am my own separate person. If I don't want to work with you, I won't. B but, hang on. You can't do that. You're a part of me. Yeah, and? You can try to force me to work with you, but I might not just do anything. I might just be lazy. Hey. Can you at least try to help me? I barely know you. You're my quirk. And? Please just give me a hand. <sighs> Fine, but only because I'm stuck with you. Hmm? You are? I, I think so. Yeah. This does sort of surprise Midoriya. As you do have Light Shadow, who does pop out of Midoriya's arm. And it actually has to go to detach from his body. Now, Midoriya would look at Light Shadow. And the doctors would all go to pay attention to this strange orb, or strange entity made of light. As it does go to look around. Now, it does then turn and go to run away as Midoriya would shout for it to stop. Now, as it was running, it would actually stop and freeze, Light Shadow being kind of confused. Now, you do then actually have Midoriya, who he's kind of surprised, him thinking that it needs to come back to him, as it is actually beginning to start moving backwards after it does turn around. Now, Light Shadow would actually go to walk back up to Midoriya, as it does actually start to at least try to fight and turn around. And it would be found that Midoriya has a quote-unquote range with his quirk. It can technically be a different part, or not a part of him, but it can't go within a, or it can't leave within a 20 meter range of him. And that does suck. Now, Light Shadow would lament on the situation, as he does grow larger and larger throughout the day. And this does actually kind of concern Inko, who was watching this little thing sprout like a weed. Now, with that being said, you do actually then have whenever Hasashi has come home from work and learn about what's going on with his two sons. Learning that one of his sons has his darkness quirk and the other does seem to have a weirder type of quirk that is similar to both his brothers and his mothers. Now, Hasashi would have been happy for both of his kids. As one day, or let's say at the dinner table, Light Shadow does manifest, and at least go to steal some food off of Midoriya's plate. And Midoriya, he would have gotten angry, asking Light Shadow about that. Now, Light Shadow would try to make a run for it, and Midoriya would once again order it to stop. And Asashi would watch the scene play out, and he would sort of laugh. 
it seems to have less willpower of its own the further away from Midoriya it does get. And that is quite interesting. Now, Midoriya, he finds this all to be quite weird. And it will take some getting used to. As we do actually then have the next day in school. Where everyone is talking about their quirks. And you do actually then have Bakugo. Who he's talking about how him and his cousins, quote unquote, all do have powerful quirks. Him referring to Tokuyami and Midoriya. Since they spend a lot of time together. And Bakugo, yeah, with the twins around, he does feel a bit more weirded out. Midoriya's quirk is the strongest one there is during the day. However, Tokoyami's is stronger at night. And he has seen this giant bird looming over Tokoyami whenever he did sleep over one night. And it did kind of frighten him. Now, with that being said, we also do have some of the kids at school who they do not like these particular three people. And they do feel like Midoriya and Tokuyami, they think that they're better than everyone else. Just because their dad is currently the number 25 hero. Now, he won't be the official number 13 until Midoriya and Tokuyami are in middle school. However, he is still working his way up through the ranks. Now, Midori and Tokoyami would have to deal with this, as so would Bakugo. These three getting in a fight with other school kids, and all of them would get in trouble and get suspended from class. And their mothers would get a call, as in Koshi's mad at both of her sons. In Mitsuki, she's currently screaming at Bakugo as she's going to bring her hand up. And give him a jab across the noggin. Now, in Koshi's trying to at least explain to her boys that they could have talked things out. To which Midori and Tokoyami do both look at each other. And they do go both to tell they do both go to tell their mother that they could have talked things out because of the other kids. They all wanted to fight them. And they kept saying things that they didn't understand. Now, Light Shadow and Dark Shadow do both pop out. And these two sentient beings free of her own children do both talk about how this is what actually did happen. Now, Enko, yeah. This was weird, and she didn't really know who to trust. So she did compare these two stories to Bakugo's. And it did seem to match up with everything. And Enko and Mitsuki did apologize to their kids. And actually reward them for standing up for themselves. Albeit getting in trouble at school. Now, this trend would kind of continue, as these three become the three musketeers of power for their area. A lot of people do want to challenge some of them, and make sure they know who's on top. However, Midoriya and his brother, yeah. This would begin to give them quite a complex, by the time they would get into middle school. Now then, with that being said, I do believe that I should leave this part off of here, and I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.